Hi there. Hi. <laughs> Finally, okay, I just want to give a quick introduction to everyone who just joined us. I'm Ilian, the editor of Powell Singapore, and with me tonight, we have Nadia Hudagalong, um, environmental ambassador among many, many other roles that you play. Um, can you tell me, about, okay, so just to also give some background why she's chatting with us today. Very quickly, you can see on our Hawaii June issue, she's going to be our cover girl, which is very apt because <laughs> <laughs> it's our sustainability issue and there's no other person better and more suitable in Singapore than Nadia herself to grace our cover. So oh, thank you. Yeah, and there and are there are there are there are a lot of people who are coming up. So there's a lot of people who are are passionate about the cause also. But thank you so much. But you've really paved the way, right? I mean, that's really all uh, you are about nowadays. And and I also want to talk a bit about um, the creative part about the June cover because, as you all know, every. We all live in a new norm right now. Is that we, we at, in the publishing world right now, we do face that challenge of not being able to conduct photo shoots, um, and it's been really challenging. And thankfully for us, perfect timing. The each the team of sustainability, Nadia agreeing to be our cover girl, and she's also a really good photographer who can do self portrait. So. <laughs> We were just really lucky. So I'm really <laughs> keeping everyone in suspense now how the shoot turns out. So not only she's our cover girl, she's our photographer too. So you you have to keep a lookout for our Judy issue. Yeah, that was uh, that was a big challenge, you know, because um the way that I shoot is is very um it's a little bit more moody and I use a, a, a vintage lens, so it's completely manual um, and it's, it's quite uh, candid also. Uh, so to shoot myself was such yeah. a challenge. So it took me Don't three days. Oh, three days? Yeah, because I, I, I just couldn't figure out how to get it right and, you know, like making everything work. So, and I was, it, it was in the middle of like a in really intense period as well with, with another a project that I just launched. And so it was, I was like uh, in between the Zoom calls, <laughs> oh. you know, trying to do it. So, but you know, Lash, I, I like, love that. What's that? Like uh, in between Zoom calls, you become that model slash photographer as well. Yes, I, but I'm always up for a challenge. So initially I was like, huh, really? <laughs> <laughs> So, thanks for helping me to push my boundaries a little bit more and, and uh, No, it's um, wonderful. Yeah. We are so glad you took it on. I'm glad I did too. And I think there's a story behind the t-shirt you're wearing, right? This t-shirt? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, this t-shirt is um, from the, the brand Pangaya. Yeah. Uh, and this, this is a collaboration they did for the bees. And I think you guys might know who this famous artist is. As, um, as. Yeah, so this is a brand that I'm. I'm oh, I, yeah. I uh, support quite a lot. They're an awesome brand. Uh, they do these. The t-shirts are made from uh, seaweed, and they've got peppermint oil in them. Uh, and they're they're actually a more than a fashion brand. They're a material science mm -hmm. company. I don't work for the company. <laughs> I'm not paid by them at all. Um, but I've done collaborations with them. So I did a collaboration with them and another artist called Raku Inoue, where we um, designed two t-shirts, one for the Sumatran orangutan and one for the Sumatran elephant. And uh, uh, proceeds of the sale of the t-shirt go to uh, two organizations in Sumatra, uh, focusing on elephants and orangutans. You know, speaking of that t-shirt, we actually have a mutual friend, Jasmine. Oh, so yes, sweet! Yes, yes. Oh, it's really, really small. She's a mute, uh, She's a friend of a friend that I got to know a few years ago. So that she's was so this sweet. Week. Yeah, she is. She's a sweetie. She's so, so um, sweet. Yeah, and I also want to talk a bit about um, your initiative. Uh, uh, we the good. We the good. Yes. Yeah. So We The Good um, is a platform that has come together out of uh, collaboration. So um, basically about, where are we now? About three or four weeks ago, I was, you know, I was feeling a bit useless, 
you know, with, with everything that was going on, I felt like, how can I not contribute? How can I not, in, in what way can I cont contribute, right? And um, I've been li living in Singapore since 1995, so I thought there, there must be a way that I can support those who are uh, in need right now uh, and who are feeling the effects of, of the COVID pandemic. So um, I, I sort of, all I've done is really shift my skill set from uh, focusing on conservation and wildlife to um, us as a humanity. And the reason that we're in this position actually as, as a human race is because of the way that we interact with our natural world, with wildlife and the environment. So it just seems fit that I'd be able to sort of pivot and adapt um, that to uh, to the people here in Singapore. And what I thought of the people who are, would be most affected at the time was the migrant workers, uh, people dealing with mental health issues, uh, or the stresses that are coming up as a result of COVID, you know, people losing their jobs, being stuck at home, the uncertainty, the anxiety, all of those things that are arising and causing a sense of um, helplessness, you know, and, um, and, levels of, you know, un all of that sort of uncertainty, right? So mental health is a very important factor for me um, and also um, individuals and families at risk because there are people for who are staying home, it's simply not safe. You know, yeah. there, are, there are many of us who are seeking refuge at home, um, but for some people who are victims of domestic violence, family violence, sexual abuse, or you're an elderly person who has dementia or Alzheimer's who normally has a caretaker there with you, but they can't be there. Um, and even um, kids for who um, home-based learning is, is just an excuse not to open the laptop, right? Mm -hmm. So it, that, that's, that's the category of, of families and individuals at risk. And so I checked with a few um, uh, people who I really deeply respect here in Singapore, who are um, you know, old school philanthropists, you know, and they're, they're really sort of in touch with what's happening on the ground, whether they were in fact um, the three main areas of need and they confirmed that. And then what I did is I quickly rallied together an incredible team of people to help collaborate on this. Um, so what we're doing is we're shining a light on the charities who are doing the, the good work. Because in the, in the early days, there was a lot of, you know, we get these WhatsApp messages or, you know, they need chargers or they need clothes or, you know, we need to get laptops for kids who can't go to school, you know. So there was always these messages and I would actually follow those up, some of them. And a lot of the times, either they were not legitimate needs or the needs had already been met. And so there was a concern for me that I would be worried that people would get fatigued from this uh, or they would donate a charger and say, I've done my job. You know, and I've donated a charger, right? Where there are people who still very much have, have needs and until today very much have needs. And they will also, after we ease uh, circuit breaker because of the, the, the um, economic um, impact, right? Um, so we're shining a light on those charities. They're not charities that have, you know, millions of dollars in the bank already, but they are charities who are working directly with um, those who are needy on the ground. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of slow and steady build that we're doing. We're trying to um, lend our platform and our voices and our um, skill sets. Uh, and I believe that everybody can. Uh, yeah, everyone who has a skill set can lend it to, um, to, to those who are in need. Yeah, exactly. And you know what you mentioned earlier about um, you felt useless, right? And among what are the feelings of negativity do you feel at the beginning of this circuit breaker or during the whole COVID pandemic situation? What were some of the challenges that you face? Well, um, it, it, it was about a, probably a week or two, a week, probably a week of anxiety. Um, and, you know, I normally, I travel a lot for my job and 2020 was an incredible year. You know, I was actually supposed to be, where are we now, May, last month speaking at the Smithsonian in New York, you know, so it's like, this is this always this, like these incredible opportunities that I'm super blessed with. Um, okay. and my whole year just got wiped out. Right. And yeah. as, as with everybody else, yeah. um, and, but. Then I went through this process of like, who am I if I'm not that person that's traveling the world and speaking on stage? Mm. Who am I if I'm not, you know, doing that, those things? The sense I'm of so identity. Different. My identity was gone yeah. completely. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and if we don't have that sense of identity, what do we have, right? 
Exactly. So then I just went through, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I have um, uh, a mindfulness practice that I've had for about 16 years. And I'm also an advisor for an organization called the Contentment Foundation. So I have access to a lot of tools to really sort of tune into my emotions and, and uh, trying to, and, and really sort of distill them down to where are they coming from and what is causing these, these things to happen. And when you do that, you have the opportunity to move through those things a lot faster. Um, yeah. than you would if you just sort of try to lock them down and, and put them exactly. away or hide them somewhere else, right? Because they will still come up. Or distract yourself, yeah. yeah. They'll still come up. Um, so I went through that, that period and I really tried to process. And then I went into building. <laughs> okay. um, so thankfully, just before, before lockdown, we um, decided to build a hamster enclosure for my daughter. Oh, who, yeah. Adopted really? a hamster, yes. Oh. <laughs> so can we see the hamster? <laughs> we can try. Should we try? Okay, yeah, let me yeah, yeah. Let me un unhook you guys from all of this contraption. We'll go for have. hamster house tour. <laughs> yes. And I have a glass of whiskey in my hand. And that nice. is because, yes, I was just on a call with Dr. Jane Goodall. Amazing. And it was just nine people on a call with Dr. Jane Goodall. And Dr. Jane loves her whiskey. So uh, we had to all have a glass of whiskey with Dr. Jane. So here we go. I'm, I, thought I'm going to make... I thought you felt stressed. That's why you needed a whiskey. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going into my daughter's room, which is... Um, oh, that's where the hamster like stays? Going in the jungle. <laughs> okay, here we go. So okay. let's see, let's see. this is the hamster enclosure that I designed that and built. A mansion for a hamster. Yes. So I'm super proud of the wooden slats, and then inside you can see there's a circle yeah. dividing the two, the dividing the two sides up. I don't know if uh -huh. you can see. Uh. Yeah. Oh, that is a little, little hole that you can get to the other side. Yes. And so I actually managed to drill that and drill this one. And then put mesh in. Um, and okay. then we have a hamster push. I don't know where he is. Hey, Booby. This space for one hamster. Yeah. Where? Oh, he's here. He's there. there he is. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Hi. That's, that's Booby. You are a very spoiled hamster. Look at the space you have. Apparently, it's just too small. Really? Uh, I thought yeah. that's like a luxurious space for a hamster. Well, oops. the thing is, we adopted everything from scratch. Yeah, everything, everything from scratch. Everything from scratch, and there was no instructions. I didn't follow anything from YouTube. Uh, I just winged it totally. Um, and so, as a result, it took me about two weeks of, of kind of trial That's and error. Not too bad. Not too bad. Then I'm, um, you know, I got handy with the Where drill and the saw. Yeah, and the materials. I had, Where them. Them? Well, I had them. <laughs> I had the tools. Wow, so really yes. sustainable, even your hamster house. Yes, as much yeah. as possible. Yeah, you were telling me earlier that even your own home is made with um, sustainable efforts as well, about keeping the temperature cool and reducing the use of AC. Could you like just explain a bit to us how that works? Yeah, so we, we built um, this home uh, about... So my daughter's 12, I was pregnant on site building this house. So 13, 14, about 14, 14, 15 years ago, 14 years ago, we started building the house. Um, and at that time, it wasn't that easy to find uh, the resources uh, that were sustainable, the builders and the, ar the architect was kind of okay, but the builder was like, uh, girl, uh, why you but that one, uh, so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle, get for you much cheaper, uh, you know, I'm like, you don't get it. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I, we, we built a home that was as sustainable as we could build it with, within the building code restriction, uh, restrictions that you have in Singapore and the lack of resources and materials and knowledge that we had at the time. So, um, architecturally, uh, what we've done is we've built a house that is facing a certain direction that um, means that we don't get a lot of direct sunlight on the house um, and it also means that um, we get some good breeze and we also have an exterior cladding on the house that is uh, allows green to grow so it sits out like 
um, it sits out about a meter from the house. So this will be like the main body of the house. And then the exterior cladding is like, it differs in different places, but it's like about a meter out from the house. And that plants grow up. So from the ground floor all the way to the top is green. And so that again stops the, um, the sunlight from hitting the body of the house and it keeps it cool. Uh, then we use things like coconut wood on the floor. Um, we, we used a mineral water system for cleaning um, the swimming pool. Um, uh, the, the, the staircase has, um, it's open on the side so it lets the heat go out. Um, but there were certain things that just was not possible. I was, I, you know, in the beginning, I was like, can we build a con shipping container house? Can we build, can we oh, do yeah. mud floors? Can we do well, all I've of those things? I've seen those like um, home makeovers on Netflix, how they make a home out of a container. Yeah, Amazing. I mean, I would love to. And my architect was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was you were like, too well, advanced for that. Well, I think it was actually building codes. So there were a lot of things that we were not allowed to do. Yeah. Yeah. So we tried. So how, much, how, much, how much do you think you have re reduced the electricity use in your home compared to an, like a, a house in the neighborhood? Another um, house in the oh, there was a time where I knew, I think it would be at least half or even a third. Um, That's a yeah. The thing is that at the moment, yeah, it would be around a half to a third um, mm -hmm. initially during, during the when we were fully operational. There's a few things that need to be fixed now, like our, our water system has changed. Initially, it was a mineral water um, system, and that's changed, and a couple of other things too. But yeah, it's, it's, it's what you call getting to the house to be a passive house. So it's a house that doesn't mm -hmm. generate a lot of heat uh, and mm -hmm. doesn't need a lot of cooling. Can you tell me a bit about how do you start um, your, 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 your belief in your approaches to a more sustainable life. What sparked that? Uh, it would be my mom. My mom. Um, okay. So yeah, my mom. You know, I grew up with my mom uh, telling me about uh, orangutans that she saved. My mom's Australian. My dad's Indonesian, and mm -hmm. so um, she lived in Indonesia for a short period of time. And while she was living in Indonesia, she rescued two orangutans. Um, and so I would always hear these stories about Michael and Ollie. These were the orangutans that she yes. rescued. And she had them sent back to a woman named Dr. Beruti, who is still working with orangutans, Borneo orangutans, until this day. Um, nice. And she would talk about, about living off the grid and being self-sustainable and all of those kinds of things. So I had no idea what any it's of those OG. things... <laughs> I had no idea, no clue what, what she was talking OG. about. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then thankfully, because I'm a young, I was a young mom, uh, and I saw very quickly how much the world changed um, within, within a, a year and a half of my life, and I was a diver, um, and I saw very quickly how much the, the ocean changed in, in like a year and a half. And then I thought, and by then I was a mom, and I was like, wow, if, if in my life, my, my world has changed so much, imagine in his lifetime. And so it's because of my mom, but it's also because I'm a parent. Um, and I feel that I can think about their clothes and their schools and their, um, uh, uh, their, their nutrition and their cohorts and all of that kind of stuff. But unless I'm thinking about their world that they're gonna inherit, then I'm not a responsible parent. So I just did whatever I could with my limited skill sets to, to make a difference. And then what a full circle you have come, and now you are also uh, speaking on working with Dr. Jane, who also works with Uncle Times, right? So you're, are you... I, I think it's... Okay, are they, let me go grab my um, earpiece, because I think it's sort of pouring at my neighborhood. Ah, yes, the rain. Yes. So I think you were just talking about Dr. Jane Goodall, right? Yeah, about how... Yes. Your mom must have like influenced the way you are now working with her. Well, I'm not. I'm not working directly with Dr. Jane Goodall. Um, mm. It just so happens that I support the Jane Goodall Institute uh, Singapore with you know like their events, their um, um, their gala dinners, and so they they very kindly just invited me on a call with Dr. Dr. Goodall. It was like a nine person call. Uh, so it's amazing to be able to have these interactions with somebody who is such an iconic legend who has uh, really paved the way for um, not only a lot of environmentalists, but, but a lot of female 
uh, conservationists and scientists um, and really has been a huge inspiration and she has not given up hope. So she's, it, it's always um, refreshing to, to have a whiskey with Dr. Goodall. <laughs> yeah. I love your glass, by the way. Oh, it's, um, it, it looks like a plastic glass, yeah. but it's, it's glass. And so it's looks like a plastic it's, yeah, it's crushed. Yeah, I love that. Okay, and I also wanted to ask you a bit about, you know, you went through uh, a bit about emotional roller coaster during the circuit breaker and this whole global lockdown. Um, I'm sure you've taken away some positive lessons out of the whole journey. And can you share with us what lessons they are? Hmm. You know, um, there's a couple of things. So, so one is our ability to, what wonderful gifts we have if we allow ourselves to slow down and tune in, mm. right? Um, mm. And when we, if we can get past the, the stories of this sucks, my life sucks, everything sucks, I had these plans, and the attachments that we had to all of those things, then we can, if we can, if we can let go of all of, of all of those things that don't change if we think about them, right? Yeah. Uh, and just um, sort of sink into just being, um, and and slowing down and reconnecting with our own self. I think that's a beautiful thing. The on the flip side, the other thing that I learned was, even though I thoroughly enjoyed that. <laughs> I realized that very quickly I made myself busy again, you know, <laughs> whether it's busy with, with uh, We The Good or, um, mm. <laughs> you know, any of these things. And, and, and it was interesting because on the call with uh, Dr. Goodall just now, she said, and she travels 300, 300 days a year, Dr. Wow. Goodall, at 86 years old, okay, oh 300 days a year. And she just said on the call, she said, I have never been busier. Oh, Dr. not traveling, not traveling, not traveling, and I and I can feel the same coming up now. Um, so today I was really sitting with myself and thinking, you know what, I need to just, I need to pull back because it's all of those things. It's our habitual, uh, these habitual human habits that we have carried with us for so long that we race to get busy again to establish who we are and and make ourselves feel meaningful, right? Um, yeah. But it's okay, you know, it's really okay to pull back and and just take time to dream and be creative and find joy and play even more so in these stressful environments. It's something that we really need to um, allow ourselves the space to do that. I mean, I have to admit the first two weeks were tough for me. I mean, you, you started to overthink and over worry for the future. And even though you know you just have to stay at home a lot more, but you wonder about, you, you start to, scare yourself over thinking about oh how, how about financial and job securities and what's going to happen and you know what there's so much things that could possibly happen that hasn't happened yet and I think that's the part we can find a joy in that you know what right now in this moment it's fine yeah and I think I if think that's what we can be grateful for then let's be grateful for that yeah and I, I do I do think that if we can be in the position right now to sort of sit on a sit on a on a on, a, on an IG live or be scrolling social media, um, we are we are in a position where we should be grateful. You know, there are like I mentioned earlier, there are people who are they they simply are struggling. They are they really are struggling. And so one one of the things that I'm really grateful for is doing something like We the Good gives me the opportunity to understand what's happening on the ground uh, mm -hmm. in Singapore. Um, and understanding that for so many right now, they really are struggling, really, really yeah. are struggling. And so, and even people who, who, who are not struggling financially, right? They're struggling emotionally or, or, or with so much stress, right? So um, I am grateful that we are able to look at this, you know, with a, with a slightly positive um, slant, but I'm also acutely aware of the fact mm. that there are so many good aunts and that we are in a position uh, to be able to use what, whatever we have to try and um, lend support to those who are suffering. Yeah, and earlier you also mentioned this part to me, which you know I truly would never have known if you didn't tell me that. Um, 
I mean, just based on what I read in the news and the reports, we just imagine that the world is healing, the world is resetting itself because tourism has completely been eradicated for these few months. Um, like you said, the skies are bluer, the waters are clearer. But uh, the dark side, which I would like you to explain more to us, is mm. I would, you know, that, that hasn't been widely publicized as much. Yeah. Um, so, so the thing is, you know, a lot of the conservation um, efforts around the world are supported by tourist dollars. Um, and whether that's national parks or um, safaris or uh, sanctuaries for our most endangered species. And those are the species that we need to work the hardest to protect, right? Because we need to maintain a balance within our ecosystem to make sure that there's rich biodiversity because everything plays a role. Everything is so intricately interconnected, right? Um, and so when the tourist dollar goes away, the money for conservation goes away. Right? Mm. And when the money for conservation goes away, rangers are not paid, there's less patrols, there's less guards, and then there's more poaching. Right? People who also would have been employed in other areas um, uh, are now losing their jobs and having to look at poaching. And if you look at countries mm. like Africa where um, they are, some of them are, are, are polygamous, they, you know, they can be a polygamous family, right? So you could have a family who has 35 kids. Oh my gosh. Okay. Right? So, so you know, he, a family could have five wives and, and 35 kids. And yeah. they may have been working in hospitality in the tourism sector. But because they have 35 kids, they have no choice now to go and look at poaching. Yeah. I mean, they have to because, feed the family. They have to feed the family. So it's driven, you know, you know, the illegal wildlife trade is very much driven on one side by extreme poverty and then on the other side by extreme greed, right? Mm -hmm. So um, all of those areas that are, are dependent on tourist dollars are really taking a, a very serious hit. So there's one, um, I mean, this is just one example that I've heard in the last week or so is that there's one organization in Africa um, that has lost $5.5 .5 million of tourist dollars uh, and they're the guys who are trying to save the an entire species. They're trying to save the northern white rhino, of which there's only two remaining. Um, mm -hmm. And they're doing an artificial, like an IVF program, uh, trying to restore the northern white rhinos. Uh, and they lose all their money. In Indonesia also, there's a, there's a sanctuary that uh, has, um, I think, around 15 elephants and, and a few tigers and some primates there as well. Yeah. They, 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 can't, they can't survive. So moving forward, you know, us as consumers, what we need to do is look at when we can travel, how we travel, you know, and then when we do travel, we travel to destinations that are actually having a positive impact on their local community and its inhabitants, whether they're two people on, they're, they're humans on two legs or they're animals on four legs, right? But they, they need to be able to be contributing to, um, positively to the environment and, and yeah. wildlife. Even the philanthropists, I think in this time, they seem to be more focused on um, the COVID efforts more than the environmental issues right now unfortunately mm -hmm. but yeah but do you yeah. think in the new norm that we will be progressing into how different would that world be or how similar would it be would it be better would it be worse well it will only be better if we make a conscious effort to shift our behaviors um mm -hmm. yeah. you know i uh, part of me thinks Great, this is the wake up call that we all needed, right? Um, and, it's, and it's these things that I've been, I've been spending my life talking about, right? Um, this, is, this is the kind of direction that, I, that, that those who are in the sector that I have been in have known is going to happen, right? So it's, okay. not like, it's no surprise for me, okay. right? And I've been talking about the illegal wildlife trade for a very long time. We're in this position because of the illegal wildlife trade, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so, um, but I also see that there are so people are so itchy to go back to their old ways. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's, it's human a, the human nature. It's human nature, you know, and um, yeah, needing to reduce the way that we consume uh, consume meat, um, the way that we consume everything. Right? We just need to sort of ease up. Um, and I hope, I think really, really sincerely hope that pe this, this period of time has, has given people the opportunity to take stock of what they actually need to survive. Yeah. Do you actually need 
to survive. Not that much, right? What we、It's、do need、true. is human contact. Yeah, that part. I don't know. And the more you don't have it, the the I mean, I'm getting used to it. And and you think that you are fine without it, but when you have it again, like you know, like even being able to see your face on the screen, you have no idea what it does for the soul, actually. And、yeah. I think that's the that that is what humans are. I mean, we are we are all connected, whether we actually know each other before this or not. And the goodness and the the things that we do, it really does have an impact on one another.、Mm-hmm. And that's what I, I that's what I do believe in. So I think I really appreciate what you're trying to do with your、uh, reader good and your other efforts as well. And you know, a little that really does go a long way. Yeah, we're, we're we're trying. You know, we're we're a team of volunteers. You know, it's it's, it's we really are a team,、um, mm-hmm. and、uh, we're doing our best,、uh, juggling. <laughs> you know, homeschooling.、Um, yeah, how has that been? All of those things. Actually, surprisingly, okay.、Uh, I okay. think out of the out of the group of us、um, who are working on really good, I think possibly、um, I have it a little bit easier because my. Youngest is already twelve,、uh, right? Yeah, so that's a good age. More independent. Yeah, and she's, she, yeah, and she's been fiercely independent. I was a little bit worried initially. I thought, oh man, I'm gonna have to sit with her all day, every day. And、that's、she's been like,、no. yeah, yeah. She's like, you know, mom, I'm, I'm starting my、wow. school now. Can you, can you go? So I've been, yeah, I'm, I'm super, super grateful for that. Super grateful. Very lucky. Been, Yeah, I'm. I am really lucky. I I really、yeah. am very very lucky. I think that's one of the few things that you know you small but great things that you discover during this period, right? You know, amazing. Yeah. And she, we just had a parent teacher meeting、um, with her teachers, and everyone has been. All of her teachers were raving about her, saying, "Oh, you know, she's she's such a joy to have in class. She's been amazing with her homeschooling. She's she's." Top in the class with this, she's this is, and it's it's amazing, really. Top money, <laughs> right? Proud、right. and super grateful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us. I really wish we could go on, but、um, we have taken a good thirty-five minutes of your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and I can't When wait for. When is the cover out? It should really be out. This week, but you know, with the whole circuit breaker thing,、um, we had to wait and see. But it will definitely、okay. be out by next week. Awesome! But I, I have seen the cover. Oh, is that your Mister Tim you talking? <laughs> yes, you. <we> have. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen the cover.、Um, yes. It looks great, and I mean, I'm just so grateful that you agreed to do that with us. Oh, we will、really、be hoping to see more of you in future, though. Yes, I'm. I'm happy to take pictures. I, I don't want to take pictures of myself. I can take pictures of other people <laughs> anytime. I don't worry. We we love to definitely see more of you with Howo. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank、Nadia. you so、Thanks、much for having、chat. me. Thank, Thank you. you. See you guys.、Say、take、bye. care, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.